Yo, what is up viewers of YouTube, Chico Army, and soon to be new recruits. My name is Tyler of the infamous Chico Crypto, and welcome to another episode of Crypto and a Cold One. First time in my new set, and I'm super pumped to be back home and bringing everyone some of the best content found on YouTube. Now, for first time watchers of my channel, I like a cold one and I like crypto, so I thought I would bring their worlds together for one crypto, beer, and wine extravaganza. Today's guest on the show is from Deschutes Brewery and definitely is one of my favorite beers, Fresh Squeezed IPA. So let's get into this right now. Oh yeah. So today's content is some juicy stuff. And if you love Neo, you will find the show fascinating. Boys and girls, we are in a bear market, and you should be reassured that your holdings of Neo will return with a vengeance when the bulls return, of which I predict will be in quarter one of 2018. This reassurance will come from a breakdown of smart contracts written by Eric Zane and De Hong Fei, the co-founders of Neo. Before Neo's rebrand from their former name AntShares, Eric and Da wrote a series of articles for the Merkle.com called Reconstructing Smart Contracts. It's three parts and if you're a Neo fan, I would definitely give them a read. For those who don't have the time, that is why I am here to go through this article for you and break down it into easy to understand terms. So let's get right into it. The basic design of smart contracts and the features smart contracts should hold true. The term smart contract, it was first proposed by cryptography scientist Nick Zasbo in 1994. He defined a smart contract as a computerized transaction protocol that function is to execute the terms of a contract. A basic contract is made of three stages, negotiation, signing, and execution. Now the beauty in Bitcoin, Ethereum, and blockchain technology is it allowed smart contract theory, which is just as old as the internet, to be realized through a secure and accountable record vehicle and runtime environment in which smart contracts can be practically deployed. Mm. Love beer. So smart contracts, unlike traditional computer programs, must be deterministic and terminable. Basically, this means number one, they must produce the same output with a given input, even on different computers or different runs on the same computer. And it must have an end. Think of it like this, since smart contracts run on multiple nodes, the smart contract needs to be deterministic or consensus could not be achieved since there would be no consistency. Blockchain developers have a duty to be highly aware of this and eliminate all undeterministic factors. So, Eric and Da explain in the article that smart contracts can be written into Bitcoin, and the scripting engine built into Bitcoin is the predecessor of all blockchain-based smart contract engines, even Hyperledger's fabric. Bitcoin smart contracts need to be extremely simple and non-Turing complete. The application using smart contracts are very limited and provide no systematic functions or the ability to call data. In comparison, Ethereum is designed to be a Turing complete smart contract platform, allowing developers to expand on the functionalities and write any arbitrary kind of program. The Ethereum virtual machine executes the contract code and programming language, Solidity. In Ethereum, smart contracts provide no undeterministic system function and data is confined to on-chain information only. So Satoshi only included support for a limited range of transaction types for security reasons, but I'm sure he had many ideas about how the scripting system could be used to create a wide range of interesting scripts to serve different purposes. A full Turing complete scripting system seems like a pretty dangerous idea to me. Eric and Daw explain that in Ethereum's call code, orders are portrayed by stacks, which enables contracts to call the code of other contracts when running dynamic calls. This has the potential to make the call route of the contract to be undeterministic, which isn't good in any smart contract platform. So the possibility of undeterministic call routes will cause significant performance loss on scalability. 
Dynamic calls make things complicated for Ethereum. It is impossible to predict the behaviors and paths of Ethereum smart contracts before executing the code, and thus it will also be impossible to know which state record the smart contracts will edit. It's not a good thing, and Ethereum does have its limitations. So Ethereum has proposed sharding, but as the article exclaims, that cross-calling requests will be written into the full network and requires the confirmation of another call before the first call executes. This greatly decreases efficiency as cross-section calling cannot be done in one block. The result is that people will crowd into prosperous sections, and calling in one section will not need cross-section calling. So everyone goes there because it's a good route. This will cause traffic congestion in this section. Think of it like San Francisco. Many people flock into the prosperous city as it provides a close proximity to business connections, especially in tech. This has attracted many people to the outskirts and suburbs, which have also became congested. Even though they keep upgrading and building roads, the congestion has not improved. So smart contracts must also be terminable which means they can't run into endless loops or they would consume infinite resources and bring the blockchain system to a grinding halt. This is called the halting problem, which describes a fundamental inability to determine whether or not a given program can complete in a finite time frame. However, smart contracts must be guaranteed to complete in a finite time frame, or they could run into those infinitely endless loops. So Dot and Eric conclude that blockchain smart contracts should be deterministic, terminable, subject to accurate resource control and resource isolation capabilities such as dockers or virtual machines. Ethereum tackles the resource control issue by deploying a fee meter, which charges a fee for every order execution. If the contract is not brought to completion as the contract fee deposit is drained, it will be forced to end and run, not run infinitely. Bitcoin employs Turing incompleteness, which by definition does not allow infinite loops. When you have Turing complete system, resource isolation becomes very important as malicious contracts would infect the blockchain nodes and reproduce. Smart contracts must be confined to isolated sandboxes such as virtual machines or dockers. Now let's take a look at NEO Smart Contracts 2.0 and why the NEO team has built a new smart contract system that combines the advantages of Docker, which is the language flexibility for programming, and the security of the virtual machine environments. So, NEO smart contracts feature high certainty, high performance, and expandability or scalability. So NEO smart contracts rule out any factors which may lead to non-deterministic behavior. System time is a very common system function but is non-deterministic. NEO makes it deterministic by providing a block-based system call that treats the blockchain as a timestamp server and obtains a new one whenever a new block is generated. Also, NEO's data sources are deterministic through the blockchain ledger and contract storage space. So each contract deployed on NEO network has a private storage area that can only be accessed by the contract itself. NEO's consensus mechanism ensures consistency of the storage status of each node in the network. In situations where access to non-blockchain data is required, NEO does not provide a direct way to interact with these data. Non-blockchain data will have to be transferred to the NEO blockchain using transactions and subsequently translated into either of the aforementioned data sources in order to become accessible by the smart contracts. Now, let's take a look at contract calls which Ethereum's design leads to some undeterministic possibilities. Neo smart contracts can call each other, but not recursively. The call relationship must also be static. This allows the behavior of the call to be fully determined before execution and the call relationship to be defined before it can run. The execution environment needs to be high performance and Neo uses a lightweight Neo virtual machine that has very fast startup which executes instructions quickly. It also uses up very little resources and is of higher security than a Docker. 
Looking at the scalability with NEO, they have created a design for unlimited scaling in the smart contract systems by setting up two simple rules. Number one, a smart contract can only modify the state record of the contract that it belongs to. And number two, in the same transaction batch or block, a contract can only be running once. Now we know NEO can scale, but how does NEO access non-blockchain data? Well, this is done through interoperable service layer of the NEO virtual machine. So this means that most upgrades to smart contract functions can be achieved by increasing the API of interoperable service layers. Pretty, pretty freaking cool. So basically, NEO has created a deterministic, terminable, subject to resource control, and can isolate resources through their virtual machines. But just like Docker's, NEO supports any high level language C, -sharp, VB .NET, F, -sharp, Java, Kotlin, with C, C, Go, Python, and JavaScript on the way. The end goal with NEO is the transferring of existing business system code directly onto the NEO blockchain. So, the NEO blockchain is certain, high performance, with a design that will allow unlimited scaling. In my opinion, NEO is the one, and from the words of Da Hongfei himself, NEO will be the number one blockchain by 2020, and I believe it with all of my heart. Well, thank you viewers for watching this video, and if you like this type of information, let me know in the comments. Also, new viewers, if you would like to join the Chico Army, first press subscribe in the bottom right hand corner of this video, I think it's over there. And if you want to join the Chico Army fully, join my telegram group, t.me slash Chico Crypto. I'll see everyone tomorrow. Cheers.